Hey, St. Albans. As I went and looked at the recording this morning, I realized that it didn't work. And so I'm going to record the sermon again for you, uh, for those of you who are joining from yesterday today, which is tomorrow, but it will be today. And it will review yesterday, which is today. To quote uh, Bob Dylan, the times they are a changing. Of course, I can mean any number of things by this, but I'm talking about this bizarre ritual of setting our clocks back by an hour. As I record this, sunset happened at 425. And I would say 425 tonight, but 425 is an afternoon time, not a night time. In case you can't tell, I'm not really a fan of this change. I am a fan, however, of the change to the trees. I think we're a couple weeks late, but the leaves are finally doing what they were supposed to do in October, and I hope you've had a chance to enjoy them before they all fall off. I always find they're easier to look at and to love if you aren't thinking about what it's going to take to remove them when they fall. Oh, the leaves, they are a changing. You may have noticed if you've come to the church, that the parking lot has been prepared for snow plowing. And I'm suddenly hyper aware that we are in this moment of change. A colleague of mine at a recent clergy gathering offered a metaphor about change that has stuck with me. She said, when the leaves fall off the trees, we have a new opportunity. When the trees are bare, suddenly we can see things we forgot were there. In my case, I know that out the bedroom window every morning, I'm getting a clearer and a clearer view of the water. I had kind of forgotten that it was just right there, as funny as that may sound. And I've noticed out a different window in the evening that suddenly I can see off in the distance the flickers of a neighbor's television coming through the woods that somehow I missed all summer. Change is all around us. And change takes work. This is just as true in yard work as it is in spiritual work. Change presents to us an opportunity to embrace something new, but few of us can do that without also clinging to things as the way we like them, the way they are, without change. So as we do the work of adapting to change, I think it makes good sense to ask ourselves if we are ready to see whatever is uncovered. Are we ready to take a good look inside ourselves? That is, it seems, what Jesus is really all about. Inviting us to see ourselves with honesty, but not for the purpose of knocking us down, rather to build us up with strong, a stronger and a surer foundation. There are many valid interpretations of the gospel reading we read earlier, uh, the story of the widow who gave all she had into the temple treasury, and many of the most interesting ones that I've read are written by women and by people who are poor or on the margins of mainstream society. The truth is, that's not who I am. And so today's sermon will be colored by my read, and it's not meant to be authoritative or final. It's just one person's understanding. So I wanted to say that. But here's what I see in it. When Jesus calls the disciples over to watch a poor widow give to the temple treasury, he, he's not paying attention to the things that society values and rewards. Otherwise, he would be very impressed by the rich who are giving large sums of money. But it's interesting that that passage doesn't say a whole lot about the rich who give large sums of money. It just says that and then moves on. But the widow catches his attention because she values what he values, and that is God. It says, quote, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. She doesn't just give with her wallet. She gives with her heart. It seems that God is not paying attention to the amount, 
God is paying attention to our hearts. So one question to ask, to take with us from this passage is, what do we do with our hearts that gets God's attention? What do we do with our hearts that gets God's attention? And what do you do with your heart that gets God's attention? Think about it. If she put in all that she had, all she had to live on, then what must have been true about her relationship with God? That's what got her, what got Jesus's attention, and that's what he is trying to teach to his disciples. Now, if you're like me, you hear this reading and feel a little overwhelmed or guilty. I've never given everything that I had to live on to the church offering plate, and so I think most of us feel a little uneasy about this story. Does that mean we're supposed to go and do the same thing? I just want to remind you of something simple and true. Following Jesus in the love of God is about making progress, not attaining perfection. It's about having a growth mindset so that someday we might grow and trust and depend on God in such a way that we have faith like this widow. It doesn't happen all at once, and it's a journey. On a related note, I'll tell a quick story about my journey. When I was in high school, I had a strange way of doing the whole teenage rebellion thing. I didn't drink beer or do drugs. I decided that I would be more religious than my parents. My parents went to church twice a week, so it's kind of funny in hindsight. But now that I'm a parent, I can appreciate that parenting me must have been an ordeal. One Christmas, to honor me and this faith journey that I was on, my mother purchased for me a widow's mite. This is the actual Roman coin that, uh, from the story, has, has the emperor on it, and it's apparently very common to find. She bought it for me, and it was set in gold as a charm, and, and she bought me a gold uh, chain as well so that I could wear it around my neck to have in memory this, this beautiful act of faith by the widow. Now, I wish I would have been mature enough to see the action of my mother's heart and her devotion to me, her son, but instead, sadly, I got caught up in a critique of the gift. Do you remember that thing that, G that Judas says to the woman who anoints Jesus, Jesus with expensive perfume? Yeah, I did that. I asked my mom why she didn't just use the money and put it in the offering plate, as that would have honored the widow. I can't believe I said that. And now I'm sure that was a hurtful thing for her to hear. And I wish I could take it back. Mom, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. None of us can undo the mistakes we've made in the past, but we can learn from them and grow. And how I've grown in my understanding of this story is to say that it's not about money. The story is about the devotion of our hearts. And so as the leaves fall and the seasons turn, and we have a chance to look at ourselves. I hope we'll look at our hearts and ask what animates them and what actions speak to the devotion of our hearts. What are we doing to get God's attention? And will we allow God to fill our hearts with the divine love that they are created to receive and give? This is Maybe a scandalous thing to say in the middle of the parish stewardship campaign, but God is not looking for your money. God wants your heart, all of it. Amen.